good morning or afternoon, year eight, whatever time it may be when you're watching this. I hope you're coping well and lockdown isn't driving you too mad. Um, I am going to start before we move on to this day, uh, this week, sorry, PowerPoint, but there's a little tiny nag. Um, I've just checked and only three people so far have completed the creative writing class. Uh, that's your assignment on Teams. It's not due until tomorrow, so that's not a disaster, but I would have anticipated more than three people would have got it completed by now. I also don't think I've received um, the work from the first week of our Arthur High King uh, from any of you. Now, I know a couple of you are struggling with the um, the PDF for the first week that I think I, that I loaded up. Uh, I can't remember if I sent it out in an email or if I loaded it up on Go. That might have been the week when my Go for Schools just would not work. Um, so please do go back to that email that I sent to the whole class and just double check that you have tried to open it. Uh, I'm going to try and resend those links out today just in case any of you are still struggling with it. Um, but school hasn't finished. Term is over. We've only got a couple more weeks. We're going to get through, push on. Uh, we're going to keep our motivation, we're going to keep working hard, um, and I want to see far more than three people having handed that working on teams tomorrow. Come on guys, you are a brilliant class, don't let yourselves down in the last moments. So, as you know we're reading Arthur High King um, of Britain. Uh, this, uh, we got introduced to the link in, the link in our last chapter. Um, and obviously that's what your creative writing was about. So you're still going to be reading this week the next three chapters this time because one of the chapters is really short. So um, added on to this week you're going to get the PDF that has chapters uh, 5, 6 and 7 in it. Okay. Um, and that, um, sorry, I'm rambling. In the last paragraph where we met the lady of the day, that links us to the poem that we're going to kind of do alongside the story. So you're going to carry on reading the story this week, but the actual work we're going to do is me introducing you to a poem. Um, and you're not going to have the whole poem, we're going to have its very long poem. So we're going to look at three sections of the poem this week. It's one of my absolute all-time favourite poems. Um, and it's a poem that I read for the first time when I was in year seven, actually. So a year younger than you. Um, and I've loved it ever since. So today's title is The Lady of Shalott. Please write that down, underline it, along with today's date. Uh, obviously, if you're doing this on a different day, write down the day that you're doing it on, that's fine. Um, if you need to pause here to write down the spelling of Shalott, please do so. I'm just going to move on to the next slide. So, what is a narrative poem? The poem we're going to look at is a narrative poem. Uh, and this is quite an old kind of traditional style of poetry. So it is a form of poetry that tells a story, okay, often making the voices of a narrator and characters as well. The entire story is usually written in verse. If you don't know what verse means, we have talked about it and covered it in class, so I want you to look that word up, put it in your vocabulary banks, and put uh, the explanation, uh, the definition, as it were, of what the word means to make sure that you remember that meaning, okay? So, first I'm going to read, on the right hand side you can see the first three stanzas of the poem, I'm going to read them and then I'll talk you through your activities. No time has she to sport and play, a charmed web she weaves all way. Sorry, let me try that again, I'm really struggling today guys. So, no time has she to sport and play, a charmed web she weaves away. A curse it on her if she say her weaving either night or day to look down to Camelot. She knows not what the curse may be, therefore she weaveth steadily. Therefore no other care hath she, the Lady of Shalott. She lives with little joy or fear. Over the water running near, the sheep bell tinkles in her ear. Before her hands a mirror clear. Reflecting towered Camelot, and as the mazy web she wells, she sees the surly village churls, and the red cloaks of market girls pass onward from Shalott. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad, 
Sometimes a curly shepherd lad, or long-haired page in crimson clad, goes by to towered Camelot. And sometimes through the mirror blue, the knights come riding two and two. She hath no loyal knight and true, the Lady of Shalott. So, on every slide, as you can see on this slide, you've got some words highlighted in red or coloured, written in red. Okay. If you don't know the meaning of those words in red, then I want you to add them into your vocabulary bank. And like I said at the beginning, this is the same for every slide. Okay. I want you to add them into your vocabulary bank. Look up. Okay. There might be more than one definition of a word because it depends on how we use a word. So read each of the definitions and then look and reread it in the sentence and the sentence before and the sentence after and see which one of those definitions makes sense for how it's being used. Okay. Write the definition that works for what we're looking at in this poem in your vocabulary bank. Uh, and make sure you keep that all laid out really nice and clear because you're using them so beautifully before lockdown, okay? Now, your first question uh, that I want you to write down in your books is what is your first impression of the Lady of Shalott? Okay, so don't think about it too heavily. Reread those three stanzas and just write down in one to two sentences what you think of, what your first impression and ideas are of the Lady of Shalott, okay? Then... I want you to decide and re-look through it, and this is when I want you to think a little bit more carefully. What lines or frames in the poem have made you think this? Okay, so reread it, think about what you wrote down for your first impression, and then think about well, what made me think that? What kind of what line, what phrase, and it might be more than one, it might be three, it might be two, it might be five different little phrases, okay? Why have they all come together to give me that impression? Okay, so you're going to write down, you don't forget to use your quotation marks, you're going to write down those um, elements that have stood out to you and have made you have that initial impression. Okay, um, and then I want you to just give me a little bit of an explanation. Okay, starting not really analysing, starting to think about analysing what is it about that phrase, about that line, about that word that makes you think or feel that about this character, okay? Then, lastly, you're probably going to need at least half a page for this last task. So draw an image, and uh, again, don't panic, I know some of you aren't great drawers, neither am I, it's not an art lesson, okay? Unless you, you know, you've got the time, I know I rush you when we're doing these in class, but obviously if you want to take longer, those of you who are artists, please do feel free. Okay, and draw an image of the Lady of Shalott. And then I want you to label that image with the key quotes that you've used to build up that, A, that impression of her, but also really think about making sure you're picking the quotes to label your image with where they specifically tell us either about what she's doing, her actions, or give us an idea of uh, how she looks, okay? And, and it's quite interesting because there's not too much detail about her physical description. We're much more told about the things she's doing and the world she's living in. Okay, so you might want to not just focus on her, but draw her whole environment. Okay, not just that woman, but draw that place she's in. Okay, what details are there that you could use to do that? Uh, Obviously, you're going to need to pause this here because I'm going to go on to the next slide. Okay, so pause, work through these, and then um, press play and you'll go on to the next slide. So, I'm not going to reread because these are the same, these ones haven't, I haven't got any highlighted in red here because these are exactly the same stance as, as on the last slide. So there's no new information in here. Okay. Uh, challenge last, so my greens and purples definitely need to do this. Uh, I would have put my reds and yellows to give it a try if they think they can, but greens and purples, it's a must. So, does the writer use colours? Okay, where, why, how, what do those colours tell us? Why is the writer use them? Pick them out for me. Can you identify a rhyme? If so, can you give me the uh, rhyme structure? Remember, the first line always starts as A. If it rhymes with the next line, then they're both A, 
And then as soon as you get to a line that, it do, that doesn't have the same rhyme, you go to the next letter in the alphabet, okay? So it might go something like AB and then AB because the first line and the third line rhyme with each other and the second line and the fourth line rhyme with each other. So wherever you've got a rhyme, it's the same letter, okay? Or you might go A, 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 B, C, D, A. Okay, if you've got three lines that don't rhyme with anything, then they're each different letters. Do you get what I mean? Okay, so work through it and give me that rhyme uh, structure. Verbs. What verbs are used? What's interesting about his verb choice? What are they telling us about A, uh, the lady of Shaw, and even more, maybe, about the environment that she's surrounded by? And again, the same for the adjectives. Why, how would he use his adjectives? What impression are they giving us? Think about, and this is with the verbs and the adjectives, really start thinking about that, that more challenging aspect that we need to explore, which is tone. Okay, positive. Are they neutral? Are they negative? Especially for the verbs, are they actions that are quite kind of fast paced and they're suggesting kind of either excitement or rush or fear, or are they quite kind of slow and steady, implying quite a calming and relaxing environment? Think about those movements. And this is for everybody. What is the effect on the reader? Think about how it makes the poem sound and feel as, it, as you read it out loud. So if you've done the challenge task in detail, then I want a really nice detailed answer to that, bringing up all of those elements that you looked at. If you haven't done the challenge task in detail because that felt a little bit too much, then just read it aloud to yourself and think about what stands out to you, what effect through particular word choices or through anything about the rhythm that you can identify has stood out to you to create an effect of the, these openings. This is a long poem, so these are the, only the opening three stanzas, okay? And I don't want bullet points for this, I've got full sentences, please don't forget. Capital letters, commas, full stops. Okay, I'm going to read the next three stanzas before we go on to your tasks. So on either side of the river, sorry, I've added words in there. On either side the river lie, long fields of barley and of rye, the cloth the world and meet the sky, and through the field the road runs by, to many towered Camelot. The yellow leaved water lily, the green sheep daffer dilly, tremble in the water chilly, round about Shalott. Willows witten, aspen shiver, the sunbeam showers break and quiver. In the stream that runneth ever, by the island in the river, flowing down to Camelot. Four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers, and the silent isle embowers the Lady of Shalott. Underneath the bearded barley, the reaper, reaping late and early, hears her ever chanting cheerily, like an angel singing clearly. O'er the stream of Camelot, Piling the, she the sheaves in furrows airy, beneath the moon the reaper weary, listening whispers, tis the fairy, lady of Shalott. Okay, so a couple of things to point out here. On either side the river lie, long fields of barley and of rye, that cloth, cloth sorry, the world and meet the sky. Okay, so this little island, Shalott is a little island in the middle of this river. Okay, and that's where her tower is, that's where the Lady of Shalott is kind of encased and entombed. So we're told that on either side of the river, she's in the middle of the river, okay, and on either side we've got these big long fields, okay, and then we're told, and through the field the road runs by. So we've got roads going through these fields to many towered Camelot, okay, so they lead to Camelot. So lots of this, the, the yellow leaf water lily, the green sheep daffer dilly, tremble in the water chilly, round about Shalot. So that's talking about the river and then like around the river and the, that, the, that island, remember the, the island of Shalot is in that river. So that's that environment of Shalot that we're getting. Okay. And then, and then the next sentence gives us some more detail on that. And then we're told by the island in the river, the island in the river, that's Shalot. Flowing down to Camelot, 
So we know the river flows down, the river that she's in the middle of flows down into Camelot. And then Camelot here is described four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers. And the silent isle embowers the Lady of Shalott. Okay, so think about that. Camelot is described as four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers. So what's that space of flowers? Where is that? Okay, what impression do we get of Camelot from that opening description? Okay, how do we see the distance between Shalott and Camelot? How do we see a mirror or a contrast potentially there? Um, so how does the poet use descriptive language to create an image of Camelot? Giving you a few hints, I've kind of broken some elements down for you there, and introduce us to the lady of Shalott. So, first of all, I want you to list three colours that stand out. Now, this could be three colours that stand out about the environment outside. It could be colours that stand out about Camelot. Okay. We don't get too much more description of the lady of Shalott herself, so there might be colours about her. And then list two literary techniques the poet is used. Remember, our literary techniques are metaphors, similes, uh, repetition, alliteration, sibilance, onomatopoeia, oxymoron, hyperbole, um, sejura, assonance, okay, and aura. Um, so, any of those that you can't remember, pause. Write it down in your vocabulary book, look up the meaning, because we've gone through these in school, okay, get them down. Uh, and list two, find two that are used in these stanzas, only the stanzas on this slide. Uh, what stands out to you about the way Camelot is introduced? How does this make Camelot first appear? Okay, so think about what lines are like highlighted as being about Camelot. Uh, think about what that suggests, how that makes you view Camelot, what it makes you think about it. Then, I want you to create a table. Okay, so use pencils and rulers for your table, please. One side is all the positive verbs and adjectives used to describe the area around Shalot. The other is the negative. What do you notice once you've done that table? Give me a couple of sentences explaining what you find really noticeable once you look at it in the table and why you think that may be, have been done. Uh, challenge, so this is for my purples, have to do it, greens, I'd like you to give it a try. Okay. So what do we learn about the Lady of Shalott in the last verse here? Why is the last line in the verse effective? What does it have, um, what does it have on the reader? Sorry, what does it have? I don't know why I wrote it like that. And what, oh, I did write effect. I'm being a fool, guys. I'm being a fool. What effect does it have on the reader and the presentation of the Lady of Shalott? So how does that build on what we've already learned? What's, what's significant? Why might that line stay in somebody's mind? How does it add or change or develop our uh, in, impression of the Lady of Shalott? Okay, so while you're working through that, you're going to need to press pause because I'm going to move on to the next slide. So, how does Tennyson present so utterly in part three of the poem? That's our overarching question as we read this, okay? And that's going to be the question that we're going to be working on much more. So I'm going to read um, these stanzas. A bow shot from her bower evers, he rode between the barley sheavers. The sun came dazzling through the leaves and flamed upon the brazen greaves of bold Sir Lancelot. A red cross knight while ever kneeled to a lady in his shield that sparkled on the yellow field beside remote Shalott. The jemmy bridle glittered free, like to some branch of stars we see hung in the golden galaxy. The bridle bells rang merrily as he rode down from Camelot, and from his blazing baldric slung a mighty silver bugle hung, and as he rode his armour rung beside remote Shalott. All in the blue, unclouded weather, Thick jewels shone the saddle leather, the helmet and the helmet feather burned like one burning flame together as he rode down from Camelot. As often through the purple night, 
Below the starry clusters bright, some bearded meteor of trailing light moves over green shallot. His broad, clear brow in sunlight glowed. On burnished hooves his war horse strode. From underneath his helmet flowed. His coal black curled as he rode, as he rode down from Camelot. From the bank and from the river he flashed into the crystal mirror. Tira lira, tira lira sang Sir Lancelot. She left the web, she left the loom, she made three paces through the room, she saw the water flower bloom, she saw the helmet and the plume, she looked down to Camelot, out flew the web and floated wide, the mirror cracked from side to side, the curses come upon me, cried the Lady of Shalom. Okay, so, the first task, remember what I said on that first slide, Red words, if you don't know them, look them up, put them in your vocabulary bank. Because uh, these key words, once you know them, that description of the answer is going to become much easier to follow and understand, okay? And um, there's a few others in there that I assume you'd know, but if you don't, and it's stopping you understanding how um, Lancelot's being described, just look them up as well, okay? But I'm assuming we know what a saddle leather is, okay? You know, it's the saddle on, uh, on a horse. Um, but if you're unsure of some and it, you, it's really blocking you being able to work out how he's being described, then please do. But I believe that once you have those red ones understood, the um, sense of how he looks and how he's being described should be very nice and clear. So we're going to do the same kind of thing uh, with the table as we did with Shalot. Okay, so you're going to create a table. All the positive verbs and adjectives are going to go on one side. I'll probably do the left side. All the negative ones, only about Sir Lancelot. Here's what you're focusing on here. Okay, only about Sir Lancelot. All the negative verbs or adjectives or phrases used to describe him on the right. Okay, again, what do you notice? Why? How does that present this character? How does that make us feel towards Lancelot? Uh, why do you, how do you think Tennyson wants the reader to feel about Sir Lancelot, okay? And what key quotes make you think this? So you're going to have to pick out at least two, if not three, key quotes that make you have this particular impression of Lancelot and why you think Tennyson wants you as a reader to feel this way. Um, and then what is the Lady of Shalot's reaction to seeing Lancelot in the mirror? How does this reaction reinforce the presentation of Sir Lancelot? That's a little bit tougher. Uh, I haven't put it as a challenge to us, so I feel like everyone can have a go. Um, but Rez, if you struggle with that, don't panic too much. It is a little bit tougher, but I do think it's one you could do, okay? Really look at that last stanza. It's all in that last stanza for that question, okay? Don't worry about the other ones for that last question. Uh, so you're going to need to pause this um, to work through those tasks. I'm going to go on to the next slide. So, quote explosion. I haven't built the quote explosion because I didn't want, I wanted to give you a bit of freedom over which quote you were going to use. So I've listed, and I think I've got five quotes there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Five quotes for you to choose from. I want you to choose two of those quotes to explode. If it's been a little bit too long since you did your last great explosion in class and maybe you need to be really confident, go back through your book. Have a look how we do it, okay? Remember, quote in the middle, think about, you have to zoom in on at least two, ideally three or four different elements of your quote. Think about what is the tone? What part of speech is it? Is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it a preposition? Is it a pronoun? Is it an adjective? If it's a verb, is it a very kind of a uh, simple verb, is it quite a dramatic verb? Does it suggest something's being done very quickly? And if so, is that through excitement? Is it through fear? Is it through panic? Uh, does it suggest something's being very relaxed and calm? How does that impact? What does that make us feel? If it's an adjective, is it a positive one? Is it a negative one? How does that build our impression? Why might that adjective be used? Um, what connotations do these words have? What might they be symbolising? Okay, and if you can identify any poetic techniques within the quote as well, 
add those in, link to that effect on the reader. How does it make us view this character? How is it presenting this character? Okay, so you might want to pause this here so you've got the quote options in front of you while you do your quote explosions. Now, your last task, your big task of this week, okay? How does Tennyson present Sir Lancelot in part three of the poem? So, we read the poem. We've talked through the poem. You've looked up and identified the words you didn't understand. You made a table looking at the positive descriptions versus the negative descriptions. You've exploded two quotes. Now you're going to write me a two what, how, why paragraphs in response to this question. So if you've only got a small section of your page left, I want you to go on to a new page. I want you to write the question, how does Tennyson present so to it in part three of the poem? Underline that. That is your question. I've got the what kind of way structure on the slide for you. So keep this up and pause while you're writing. Or take a photo of it so you can turn this off and just have the photo uh, on your phone next to you, okay? So what? That's how we open it. Your what should be one to two sentences. That's all, okay? Directly answer. So Tennyson presents Sir Lancelot as a weak and feeble knight. Tennyson presents Sir Lancelot as this gallant, dramatic, beautiful, eye-catching knight. Okay. Uh, Tennyson presents Sir Lancelot as somebody that's quite easy to ignore. What do you think? Looking at that description, which one of those options do you think is the most appropriate? Okay. So how does he present Lancelot? Then, link to your quote, okay? My purple's try to embed, so that means starting a new sentence that, that builds your quote into part of that sentence. But if you can't, just do what we normally do. This is evident in the quote. This is suggested in the quote. This can be seen in the quote. And then give me one of those quotes you have already exploded. Use quotation marks. Use a full stop at the end of your quote inside your quotation marks. How to? This is when all of that annotation, the harder you worked on your quote explosions, the easier this part will be. So this is where you zoom in on two or three sections of your chosen quote and tell me what tone do they create? What connotation does that word have? What word class is that? What does that word or that phrase suggest about the answer of, okay? And what and then how three, what effect does that, this quote, that word, that phrase have on us, the audience? What does it make us see Lancelot as? What does it make us feel about Lancelot? What does it make us predict about the lady of Shiva when she sees Lancelot? Okay. What does it make us think the introduction of this character may do? What change could it bring? Uh, four is only a challenge. So if you can. Do this. Don't panic if you can't, okay? Uh, alternative interpretations. So, on the other hand, the quote could present so an answer what as. And then give me a little tiny breakdown of why there's a different way that you could interpret that quote. And then why one? So, we've got what? We've got three hows, maybe four if you want to try the challenge. And then one why. So, what's the writer's intention? Why do you think Tennyson wants to create this impression of so an answer what? Think about the themes of going through the poem so far. Think about what we already know about the poem and the lady of Shiloh. And then think about that last stanza and that re uh, reaction of the lady of Shiloh. Use a quote from that last stanza, okay? Why does Sir Lancelot need to be described in this way in order to make that reaction understandable? In order for, for us almost to be anticipating that reaction? in order for that reaction to be even more dramatic and kind of like, oh no, no, you've done it now. Okay, think about why he presented an answer in that way and how it links. Think about what that last stanza means for the lady of Shiloh. What is what has her has the introduction of Lancelot done to her and her world and her life? Uh, if you've got any questions, if there's any of those elements you're struggling with, please just message me on Teams or send me an email, okay? I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a lovely week, year eight. Get that work completed from last week and get it loaded up on the assignments. 
and uh, you'll either get a tutorial from me next week or you'll just get your PowerPoint uploaded. Uh, see you soon. Bye.